Scary Mysteries, Twisted Twos, Herbert Shermer, and Project Blue Book. Tales of hauntings, murder, and scary mysteries. Every week, Twisted Twos dives into a pair of unique stories that are worthy of a more in-depth look. For this week, we focus on the story of a man and his unusual encounter with a UFO, as well as the infamous top-secret government organization dubbed as Project Blue Book. Get ready for Scary Mysteries, Twisted Twos. Number 1. Herbert Shermer The 22 years old policeman Herbert Shermer from Ashland, Nebraska, experienced one of the most bizarre encounters of his life. The young officer was on patrol on December 3, 1976. While driving his car, he saw what looked to be a large truck with red lights flashing on the top of it. He just finished checking things off on Highway 6 and was now on the intersection of Highway 6 and 63 when he spotted the lights. Like any officer of the law, he was curious what it was, so he headed over to take a closer look. He moved down the road, came to a stop, then aimed his headlights at the large truck, only it wasn't a truck at all. According to him, the red lights he saw were coming from what he described as portholes from a disc-shaped metallic craft. It was hovering about eight feet off the ground and had a polished aluminum finish, it also had a walkway all around its circumference. At the bottom, he could make out what looked to be legs poking out from it. Dumbfounded by what he was looking at, the craft then slowly rose up into the air and began sending flames out from beneath it. Shermer said he could hear what sounded like sirens coming from the object as it rose higher into the air. The UFO then flew over his patrol car before eventually flying away. Herbert was shook. He took note of the time, it was 3 a.m., and he headed back to the police station. He made the following entry into his logbook, saw a flying saucer at the junction of Highway 6 and 63, believe it or not. Then things started getting weird for the young officer. He developed a red welt around his neck and began suffering headaches and started feeling ill. Shermer's report made its way to the Condon Commission at the University of Colorado, which investigated the sighting. He was asked by the commission to visit Boulder on February 13, 1968. While there, he underwent hypnosis to discover what it was he really saw. It was only under that hypnosis that more details emerged about the encounter. Shermer said that when he approached the unusual craft, his car engine and radio died. There was a white object that came out of it and spoke to him telepathically stopping him from pulling out his weapon, which he wanted to do at that moment. Shermer was brought inside the craft and saw aliens looking like actual human beings, but each one was wearing a uniform with a strange winged serpent insignia, much like you would see in ancient times. What's unusual is that the symbol is reminiscent and often linked to reptilians or lizard-like aliens supposed to be capable of shape-shifting into human form. Shermer added, while in the craft, the creature actually explained their propulsion system to him. Shermer agreed to take more psychological tests and even took a polygraph and passed. As Herbert's statements were being investigated, a local Ashland police chief named Bill Lashin also conducted his own investigation and visited the site of the UFO encounter. He couldn't find anything unusual, save for a small piece of metal. The fragment was said to be a mix of iron and silicone and didn't seem to be directly related to the sighting, so no additional tests were done on it. After the investigation concluded, Shermer then returned to work. As his boss retired, he went on to become the chief of police. But because he went public with his UFO sighting, he was bullied and taunted by the public for it. In at least one instance, someone even threw dynamite at his car. His wife also left him during the time. Shermer then ended up resigning just two months later. Trying to figure out what happened and seeking relief from his problems, he went on to undergo more regressive hypnosis sessions in June of 1968. More details from those sessions were collected, and a majority were compiled into two books by Eric Norman. Shermer's experience is a well-documented case of encountering a UFO 
But today, no one knows for sure what he actually saw. Number two, Project Blue Book. The infamous Project Blue Book had two goals. The first was to figure out if UFOs were a threat to national security, and the second, to scientifically analyze any UFO-related data when they got a hold of it. It was first formed in 1952. It was the successor to previous government programs, SIGN in 1947 and GRUDGE in 1949. These two programs also studied UFOs, but to a lesser extent than Project Blue Book. It was June 24, 1947, when businessman and pilot Kenneth Arnold was flying a small plane from Cahalas to Yakima, Washington. During the flight, he made a brief detour after finding out there was a reward for the discovery of a downed transport plane close to Mount Rainier. Once there, he tried searching for the plane for a bit, but with no luck, he decided to give up. Arnold flew eastward, heading to his destination, when he caught sight of a bright flashing light in the distance. The light beamed from his mirror, and he was afraid there was another plane flying too close. He looked around and did see a DC-4 flying to his left, but behind him about 15 miles away. Then just seconds after seeing the initial light, Arnold saw a series of bright flashes to his left, north of Mount Rainier. It was about 20 to 25 miles away. According to Arnold, he estimated the saucer or disc-shaped crafts to be running at 1,200 miles per hour, faster than any known craft at the time, and it was close to 100 feet in length. Arnold thought he had witnessed a U.S. military test flight, but still, he wasn't sure. This sighting paved the way for Project Blue Book to be formed. Ever since the Mount Rainier sighting, a rash of witnesses came forward stating their own experience about mysterious UFOs. Around this time, one of the most controversial reports was the supposed downed UFO that crashed in Roswell, New Mexico. This was later revealed by the military to be a top-secret balloon dubbed as Project Mogul, but nevertheless, the allure and frenzy of UFOs would capture public interest as well as those behind the scenes in Project Blue Book. The project's headquarters was located at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. The idea of UFOs became so controversial during this era that in 1952, President Truman's administration was scared hysteria would break out. The following year, the CIA decided to respond to such fears by assembling an expert panel of scientists and technology experts to talk about these mysterious crafts. This was known as the Robertson Panel. The panel members met for three whole days where they interviewed military officers as well as Blue Book officials. They also examined photos and films of UFOs. Although the panel concluded that 90% of the sightings and reports of UFOs were misidentified weather or meteorological activity, they didn't make their findings public until 1979. The panel also recommended that the Air Force de-emphasize the UFO subject matter and go on a public debunking campaign using popular media entities like Walt Disney Productions, astronomers, psychologists, and even celebrities. This delay in declassification and attempt at debunking only fueled the UFO fanfare though, feeding more suspicion that the government is hiding something from the public. Project Blue Book would go on to compile more than 12,618 UFO sightings in the next 17 years. About 90%, as mentioned, were attributed to astronomical, atmospheric, and man-made phenomena. The remaining reports, though, about 700, were classified as unidentified because there wasn't enough evidence to rule it out one way or the other. By 1969, Project Blue Book was officially disbanded. In conclusion, the project said that while there were incidents and crafts classified as unidentified, there's no concrete proof these technologies came from beyond modern technological scientific knowledge we have today or even extraterrestrial. Even though Project Blue Book ended, various government investigations into UFOs have continued. Most just went on under different names. In 2014, the New York Times exposed a secret UFO government program that ran between 2007 and then suddenly ended in 2012. 
Then in 2019, the U.S. Navy released some of their sighted and recorded videos of UFOs and said that they are real. The videos were leaked recordings of UFO encounters by pilots in the U.S. Navy. Short of calling it an actual alien, the U.S. Navy admitted that the crafts these pilots saw remain unidentified, so they don't know who it is from or where it's from. Nowadays, they prefer to call it an unidentified aerial phenomenon. UFO acceptance and attitudes have changed over the years. While many still think they're not real, more and more are starting to believe there could be some truth to the reports. Studies of UFOs, such as Project Blue Book, done by the government, isn't unique to the United States either. In fact, similar organizations have also been created in countries all over the world, including the UK, Australia, Sweden, Canada, and Greece. With so many places willing to investigate them, it's hard to believe that UFOs could only be a figment of our imaginations. So they were two of the strangest and most out-of-this-world stories around. The world can be a crazy place, and Twisted 2 is sure to show you why. We have new videos every Wednesday and Saturday, so if you enjoyed watching this one, then please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.